Hey guys, welcome back to another video in my series of my tips and strategies on playing PUBG. And as we get into this game, uh, since it's my 10th episode um, for this series, all I really am hoping that people kind of get from this is really to understand that I, you know, I do not consider myself to be a great PUBG player. Uh, I, I think I'm good at the game. I don't think I'm great. Um, one of the reasons I don't think I'm great at the game is I'm not as good with the sniper rifles as I kind of want to be. You know, I, I watch other people play, um, and I see how good they are. Uh, you know, I'm in awe of, of some of these guys. So the highest I've ever been ranked, at least when I checked, because uh, I really don't check that often because I really don't care about really my ranking. Uh, but the highest I ever was... Um, was 116 and that was for the North American server for first person perspective and because that's the only thing that I play um, and so you know I know how many there are a lot of really great players out there but there's also a lot of really good players out there so I'm definitely not the only person that uh, kind of plays with sort of the strategies that I do um, a lot of people are really good, so there's definitely a lot of people to kind of watch who, who play PUBG. But, you know, at the end of the day, the way that I play, it works for me. It allows me to play and have fun, even though I get really frustrated at times. But at the same time, uh, it allows me to really just enjoy the game. And, you know, I wouldn't enjoy the game if I couldn't get a chicken dinner, if I, if I couldn't be the, uh, you know, winning the game. So... Go ahead and kind of just jump into this game. This game uh, was actually a lot of fun. Uh, I actually was streaming this game, and the funny thing is, I actually had a a, a, a lot of people in my stream um, for as small as my channel is, and so I was kind of having a lot of conversations with the people who were in my in my chat. So it actually works out because I end up dropping into El Pozo. And I'm in the middle of the circle. So when I jump down into here, I find this AKM, and I knew that there was another guy with me uh, over in this building. And so I was kind of waiting for him, and he ends up showing up here. And so I'm kind of taking a moment, picking my shot. And I end up getting that guy down immediately. So it's like one of the, the first kills that I get for this game. So as this game is sort of progressing, um, because I'm in the middle of the circle, I'm not really paying attention to really the game, and I'm I'm just kind of talking with people in my stream about uh, music and uh, uh, movies and, and and other games um, that uh, you know I love to play. Which, by the way, if you've never played the game Inside, uh, it is the second release from uh, I believe it's uh, Play Dead Studios I think it's Play Dead um, uh, I could be wrong on that but they made Limbo which was a people love that game it's a great game if you never played Limbo uh, but then Inside as well so we uh, that game's amazing uh, if you've never played it don't watch any videos on it just go play it uh, and so I'm having conversations like that and the reason that it ends up kind of playing a factor is I'm not really paying attention in this game and I end up not getting a helmet. Uh, I go <laughs> through over half the game and it just really never dawns on me that I, I never find a helmet. So uh, kind of see what else is going on over here. There's some guys over here that are fighting. Uh, Morpheus ends up getting this guy down and Lotso hears this and he starts to move over and they end up getting into a fight so I believe Lotso is the one who comes out the victor over here uh, these guys will fight here in a second so all that's really taking place at the moment is um, you know I'm in the middle of the circle I'm in El Pozo I had gotten a chicken dinner earlier uh, in the day uh, playing on El Pozo. I had actually had two chicken dinners on the day. Uh, so half the reason I jumped into El Pozo, even though I, I love it. Yeah, Lotso won that one. So I love to jump into Pozo just because I love the layout of this uh, of this city. I, I think there's a ton of great places to go, lots of cover. Uh, I like it when games sort of end 
in Pozo or any uh, Los Leones and some of the big cities. So all that's really happening with me through really the first half of this game is I'm just kind of uh, talking to the people. I'm getting some stuff. I find some um, good items and whatnot. So uh, I had, a, uh, I believe, an AKM. I believe. Uh, I can't remember exactly which guns I end up with. So I've got an AKM, and I think I find, yeah, that's right, I've got a Mini-14. Now, I don't have a scope for the Mini-14. Um, so I'm kind of running around trying to find some more stuff, and we'll go ahead and fast forward a little bit here. And here we go. So you can see where the circle is again. You know, we're about halfway through the game, so I just continuously am in this circle. Uh, I'm not having to move anywhere. I'm not having to go anywhere. And so I'm kind of just uh, doing my thing. Fast forward a little bit more. And let's see where I end up. I still don't have a helmet. And we are now officially uh, <laughs> through the halfway mark of uh, this game. And it was right around this time is when I realized, like, oh my gosh, I don't have a helmet. So I knew that I had just seen some helmets uh, over here and they don't show up uh, for some reason in the replay so I actually moved from this building over into this building tried to get out onto this ledge and when I get out onto this ledge my intention is to get one of the level one uh, helmets the funny thing about this is as I'm sort of coming through uh, through this building I come through this door, and all of a sudden there's a guy right in front of me, and I can't really hear him because of the plane coming over. And I'm trying to get better using the AKM, um, uh, using sort of the uh, burst fire, uh, getting five or six shots off, and then stopping, and then uh, opening up again. It helps with the recoil. And uh, uh, I've said it before, but if you've never watched any of Wacky Jackie's PUBG videos. It's Wacky Jackie. Uh, definitely watch his videos. Uh, he has fantastic... I think he has the best PUBG videos out there, uh, if you've never seen any of those. Oh, no, I'm not reporting anybody. Good night. I'm trying to get it back to me. There we go. Alright, so... All that's really happening now is I've got two people down at this point. Uh, I get some really good items off this guy, including a level 2 helmet, which was fantastic. So I get that. I also ended up getting a uh, scope off of that guy for my Mini-14. Uh, I think I got a compensator off of him. I get some first aid. I get uh, some boost. So I'm, I'm really kind of set up uh, for the remainder of the game uh, just off of uh, taking this guy out. So a little bit later on, we are going to see a, 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 a mistake that is done by SBS Teebs. Uh, we'll see him a little bit later on. Uh, and he makes a mistake that's actually kind of funny. And a lot of times when I see somebody make a mistake, you know, I try to figure out exactly, you know, what they were thinking. Uh, so I can kind of know not to do that in the future. Or, you know, anyone who watches the video, so you don't do it either. And um, it's kind of tough to figure out exactly what was going through that guy's head. But we'll come back to him uh, near the end of the game. So... Uh, what actually happens from here, we'll go ahead and fast forward a little bit. Uh, I end up having a guy who comes into uh, where I'm actually at in the building I'm in. So I'm kind of just continuously looking, see if there's anybody else who's coming in, and we'll end up seeing a guy who comes in on a motorcycle from over in this area. And I actually take some shots at him with... Um, the Mini-14, but I don't get him down, and he ends up, yeah, here he comes, uh, Modern Daisy. So this guy ends up coming into the uh, same building that I'm actually in. So that's where I'm trying to shoot this guy. I don't get him. And so here's what kind of happens. This is sort of the thought process going through my head at the moment. So I know that this guy is down on the bottom floor, and I'm up here. So I want to make sure that he does not come up here. So I chuck a grenade. Now I, I have no intention of thinking that that grenade 
that that grenade is actually going to uh, kill him. Um, uh, what I'm basically telling this guy is, you stay down there, I'm going to stay up here. And it's not because I don't want to engage this guy, but I don't like getting into fights uh, really on the second floor of a building, uh, and I don't like getting into a fight on the stairwell. So all I'm trying to do with this guy is tell him, like, you know, I know you're down there and now you know that I am up on here on the on the next floor so I hear him open up this door uh, down here once I hear him open up this door I can hear his footsteps down here as well and that's when I make the decision that I'm going to run out of here I jump down and I run across into this next building over here and the reason I'm doing that is because I think it's going to give me uh, more of a level playing field uh, just to be able to kind of see where this guy is because at the same time the circle is going to start uh, moving in here um, in a minute and we're going to see where this next circle ends up as the plane goes over so there's a couple of other guys in this game who actually had really good games and we'll look at one guy in particular and uh, the guy we're gonna look at actually uh, kinda runs into just sort of bad luck uh, for something that actually happens and the guy is uh, Chappy Stick over here uh, this guy actually played a really good game you know I saw his name popping up a lot in the uh, kill feed and he has got an M249 I believe uh, which is a really good sniper rifle and so uh, he's getting a lot of people down in this game and we'll come back to him in a minute so now the circle finally hits and I can see where the next circle is so that now I actually know I've got to move from the area that I'm in and now I'm gonna move up to here so the area I want to get to is right over here so I know that modern Daisy is right there on my right so I know that he's there. This is the guy that I know I'm going to have to engage because we can't both kind of run out at the same time. So this is the guy I'm going to be looking for. And while I'm over here, I go ahead and uh, take some painkillers. I end up taking a boost in a minute. And here's what I end up uh, determining. Uh, the way that I sort of saw this was that what was going to end up happening where the circle ends up is this guy's really only got sort of three options but only two options make the most sense so when I see where this circle is gonna end up being I'm realizing that this guy okay he's right here in this building what makes the most sense is for this guy well there's three options one would be to come out over on this side and then run up through this way in order to get to the circle but that means he's still gonna kinda have to run over here his other option is to come straight out the front uh, instead of coming out the side over here. His, his third option, which I don't think is his best option, but this is the one he ends up choosing. His third option is going to be to run out of the building that he's in, come across the street, and he's going to end up actually over to where I'm at. So I end up positioning myself by this window because I'm thinking most likely what he's going to do is to actually come out the front over here and then he's going to end up kind of running right in front of me right in front of my window instead what he ends up doing is he runs straight into the building I'm in and I can hear his footsteps I hear him break through the glass it's delayed reaction with the sound with the glass and I'm able to get the guy down uh, immediately so you know he pops right in and I take him down so it didn't really matter which direction this guy was going to move I knew that I was going to wait for him because there's really no reason for me to um, try to go engage the guy because he's going to have to come in my direction now the other funny thing is uh, when we were down to 13 people that were still alive I actually told my stream like alright guys I'm not gonna ignore you but I actually really need to focus uh, because what's gonna end up happening here I actually could end up getting a, a another chicken dinner for the day so I'm gonna kinda I need to focus at the moment so I now have my third person down I'm running over here I know the direction I wanna go so I start running up and I'm realizing that there's a really good chance that there's going to be someone either on my left or on my right. 
uh, who's also going to be running from the areas that we were in, you know, sort of the heart of the city to get into the next circle. So I get up to here and I kind of look back uh, with my Mini 14 and uh, just to see if I see somebody. So I see this guy and I start taking shots. And I can't get the guy down. And I was... I turns out I was actually really frustrated, but not getting the guy down actually really worked out, and you'll kind of see why, because we will get to Chappy Stick here in a second. So Marco Polo has uh, he has um, healed himself up, but now he's going to be way late to the circle. So this guy ends up running and gets into this truck. And when he gets into the truck, he starts coming up, kind of look at it from Chappie's point of view. He hears a vehicle, but he doesn't see it. Now what Chappie ends up doing is he spends an exorbitant amount of time looking for the guy who was in the truck. Now, I knew that that guy had died to the play zone. The reason is because I actually, you know, I didn't know 100% that it was Marco Polo in the truck, but... I knew that um, I could hear the truck. I knew that somebody had gone in it. I knew that it was somebody from uh, Marco, uh, or that it was the guy that was from over here. So when all of a sudden I don't hear the truck anymore, I know that that's probably the guy that gets taken down. The problem for Chappie is he's spending so much time looking for the guy who's already died. He's not paying any attention to Max over here. And Max ends up getting up here. He sees Chappie running through. And he ends up kind of just sighting him in and waits for his shot. Because Chappie is still looking for that guy. And he kind of pauses for a second. And he gets taken down. So if Chappie, and, and I actually was really kind of glad when I watched the replay because Chappie's the guy who was taking out a ton of people. So even in the stream, I saw that that guy went down and I was actually really glad because uh, I knew he was going to be a tough out. So if Chappie had not spent as much time as he did looking for this guy and had gotten Max down, it's possible that from his position over here, he, you know, he might have been able just to start taking out the rest of us. So, what is going on now at this point? Um, I'm going to back up just for a second so you kind of see what happened with me. Uh, I end up getting to where I'm at over here. And now I'm looking. I can hear gunshots, obviously, from this area. So, I'm looking. I see this guy up on the ridge, uh, Finch. I end up taking a shot and I miss him. And turns out the guy over on his right, MBY Tor, however you say that, uh, he gets finched down. I see him jump down. And so I'm kind of hoping that I'm going to be able to get some shots on MB, but I don't. Uh, he never really makes himself visible because the circle's about to hit. And when the circle hits, you know, I've got to move up. So we're down to five people, and we talked earlier that there was going to be a mistake to be seen, and the mistake is SBS Teebs. Okay, so let's let's kind of pause it for a second. Now, I'm going to tell you, there's the best idea that I can kind of come up with for what ends up happening with this guy. Now, when I'm playing every single time that the new circle hits, I will open up my map and can't do it on a replay, but I will end up setting a marker. And I always set a marker to where it is that I'm trying to go. And then marker is just to kind of help me stay on pace for where it is I'm trying to go. Um, I think what makes the most sense is that uh, Teebs here had set a marker and forgot to kind of set a brand new one. So as this next circle comes in, instead of Teebs running to where he's supposed to be getting into the next circle, he busts through this window and he starts running in the wrong direction. This guy is slowly advancing further and further into the blue zone, taking a ton of damage. And it's like all of a sudden at the last second, he realizes and he starts to run and it's like too late pal uh you are toast that's the only thing that makes sense uh because anything else just doesn't really make sense 
why this guy would deliberately run into the blue zone uh, this late in the game because you're going to take too much damage. Um, so kind of what's happened with me now, I've worked my way over to here. And again, we're going to kind of pause it real quick. Uh, I know that there's four people left. And here's the thing. I can hear gunfire. I can hear the explosion. So I know that there are two people over on this side of the circle. I know where the last guy is because I was uh, watching him earlier. So I know that it's MB and I know that he's over here somewhere over on this side. Now, the funny thing that you'll end up hearing is a ton of grenades. Um, for <laughs> I don't know how many grenades these two had between the two of them. Uh, you've already heard several explosions. You're going to hear a whole lot more. Uh, these guys were just chucking grenades at each other like it was going out of style. They are just going to town. So those two have a really interesting fight. Now, where I'm at over here, I'm still kind of just... Uh, you know, waiting to see uh, where this next circle is going to end up being, but I've got you know uh, 50 seconds before I have to worry about it. So I start looking for MB. I see him at this moment, but he goes out of my line of sight. So I start moving over. I realize this guy has no idea that I'm over on his left. So I start moving up, and at first I think that he might be at that rock uh, right in front of me, and maybe even on the other side of it. And it's only after. I, I kind of move over into this area and then I end up seeing uh, movement on my left and I don't get this guy down as quickly as I would have liked. But eventually I get this guy down. So I'm, I've, I've got four kills at the moment and I go ahead and I start moving up to uh, this rock. So... I, at this point, I really want to give some really big props to uh, Shady Sparrow TV. Um, this guy did a great job, and you'll you'll see that here in a second. So I'm going to kind of pause it for a second. I'm going to show you the decision that this guy makes, and it's a it's a it's the best decision that he could have made. So you can see where we are now in real time you know we don't know where each other is so the only thing I know is I know that there's a building right over here and that's probably where this guy is now this guy knows that uh, there's a big old rock over here so he knows this is probably where I'm at now he's got a, basically three choices in order to engage me so his first choice is to just come around the corner and come straight at the rock the problem is he has no cover and I'm going to be able to lean into a shot. He would know this. The second option he's got is to move left and to move over to here. He has a little bit of cover with this tree, but not really if he's trying to advance onto the rock where I'm at. So again, no real cover, not a good decision. The best decision that this guy can actually make is to end up running around this side, get down into this little indentation area kind of be out of uh, my line of sight and that's exactly what he does so we'll end up kind of looking at it from my point of view and I am sort of looking to the right I'm looking to the left and you're gonna end up seeing his um, uh, little name tag start to move there and you'll notice that I don't see his head I don't see any part of this guy so I'm gonna slow it down here real quick so this guy did a phenomenal job in putting himself in the best position to engage me and sort of end this fight right now. Uh, what ends up happening is sort of at the last moment, I end up hearing footsteps and I realize that this guy is on my left and he's sort of way over on my left. So I immediately kind of turn to uh, find him. And I end up seeing this guy. We sort of see each other at the same time, but he ends up getting the first shots off. And uh, boom, there he is. Bring up the gun. He nails me. And Shady. I'm sorry, man. I end up just kind of getting a, a couple headshots in on the guy, and I end up getting him down. So I get my third chicken dinner for the day. Uh, it was a five kill game. Would have been six if I had gotten Marco down, but turns out I'm glad I didn't because uh, ends up getting uh, Chappy uh, taken out by Max earlier. So this was a really fun game. Um, uh, just really because I was streaming and having fun uh, talking to my stream, and at the same time, uh, I never really had to move. And so as the game winded down, 
Um, you know, I kept putting myself in sort of the best position to be in order to engage the person that was sort of closest to me. The only time I didn't do that was here at the very, very end of the game when it was heads up. And I end up just getting a little bit lucky because you can see how much health I've got left. And uh, Shady was so close to getting me down. So all in all, this was a great game. It was a lot of fun. So, you know, I hope these kind of videos, guys, that you watch, that you really kind of do learn and understand sort of some of the tips and strategies on how to constantly sort of move where it is you should put yourself um, and how to take advantage of uh, getting into a fight and how to sort of gain that advantage. So that's the whole point of these videos. Again, I'm not touting myself as a phenomenal PUBG player, uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm good at the game, I'm decent at the game, I can get the chicken dinners, and I have a lot of fun doing it. So thanks so much, guys, for watching, and we will catch you next time. See ya.